Tonight, a Broken Hill aged care facility thrown into lockdown following a new COVID case. And SA Independent Senator Rex Patrick to recontest his upper house seat. From our seven Spencer Gulf Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamei begins now. Good evening. A resident at St Anne's Nursing Home in Broken Hill has tested positive to COVID-19 yesterday morning. The aged care facility will go into a two-week lockdown as part of the direction from public health. COVID-19 making its way into a Broken Hill nursing home. One positive rapid antigen test recorded at 8 yesterday morning at St Anne's. The facility setting their COVID action plan into motion. So far, there's only one case. No, we've been lucky. Um, we're just sitting at the one resident at the moment, which, which, is, which is good. For the next 48 to 72 hours, there'll be no visitation while the premise keeps an eye on the patient. People in palliative care will have exceptions. Just to start off with, there'll be no visiting um, unless someone is in a transitioning stage of palliative care or um, we identify that someone needs that visit due to social um, needs and things. Everyone who visited St Anne's yesterday has been notified as possible close contacts. While the current risk is minimal, the next three days will be key. It's quite a large facility, 121 beds and four separate wings. So unless you're specifically visiting in that wing, then there is no, there is very minimal risk. The resident who tested positive is recovering well, with only minor symptoms. If you visited the home on March 28th and have any symptoms, be sure to get tested. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. South Australian Senator Rex Patrick has reaffirmed his intention to run for the Senate at the upcoming federal election. Last week, the Senator hinted on social media he would be running for the lower house seat of Grey, following Nick Xenophon's announcement he would run again for the upper house. However, in a statement released today, Mr Patrick said he won't change his plans and the Senate needs strong independence. In Port Lincoln, a man has been charged for allegedly smoking cannabis in front of police on Liverpool Street. At around 2.30 this morning, police spoke with a man who was allegedly in possession of cannabis. He was searched. Police say a knife was also found. Both the cannabis and the knife were seized and the 19-year-old local man was taken into custody. He was bailed to appear in the Port Lincoln Magistrates Court in May. SAPOL says drivers in the state are choosing their phones over safety. Police caught more than 250 drivers using their phone during Operation Fatal Destruction last week. Motorists were seen scrolling on social media and reading messages while waiting at traffic lights. Police say the results are alarming and frustrating. 24 people in the state lost their lives last year due to phone-related distractions and 203 people were seriously injured. Corn and Hawker's tourism appeal has been given a boost by the local council's street upgrades. With hopes by improving facilities, tourists may quickly become residents. The Flinders Rangers Council are giving towns a facelift worth smiling about. Various upgrades are taking place on the streets of Hawker and Quorn, starting with the paving of footpaths. At stage two, so you can see on the other side of the road now the pavers are going down. Hawker is virtually finished. A little bit of touching up to do up there. Uh, it's just making such a wonderful difference. The council says the paving has created better access for properties as well as improving the overall look of the townships. The added benefit of these pavers is they've got a lifespan of around 70 years, so maintenance-wise for the council, uh, it's a good investment. The towns are becoming more tourist-friendly, street signs with directions to popular locations now in place. You'll notice around the town that we do have new signs. We have developed a tourist loop trail, which travels from here, goes up to uh, Hawker, spreads out into some of the, the areas of interest. The council has also consulted with the community on various design concepts for updated entryway signs into both towns. This is to put pride back into our community so our locals also feel pride because then they'll help convince people to come here and set up business and stay. The mayor hoping the council can continue working with the new Labor government to keep improving the towns. With multiple projects on the go, council is thanking community saying it will all be well and truly worth it in the long run. Still to come tonight, the warning for construction workers to cover up amid rising cancer rates. And an acclaimed musician announces a major regional tour with Wyala on the list.
Welcome back. A report has found tradespeople aren't being sun smart on the job, despite receiving at least five times more UV exposure than indoor workers. As part of a new campaign, the Federal Government and Cancer Council are urging those who work outside for long hours to take precautions. Australian tradespeople risking their long-term health according to researchers. New data showing more than three quarters of the Australian workforce can't explain how UV works. The YouGov survey has shown that about a quarter of tradies only rarely or occasionally use sunscreen on a job site in summertime and in winter that drops to about half. The Cancer Council says complacency around sun safety often leads to cancer later in life. Which means that we've got a whole heap of workers outdoors um, exposed to really high levels of UV and not being protected from the sun. The survey also finding that 6 in 10 Australian construction workers know colleagues who have had skin cancer, prompting more companies in the sector to encourage builders to take the necessary steps to avoid UV exposure. It's very important to um, try to seek shade actually, the new initiative, um, one of them instead of this uh, slip slop slap. Um, seeking shade is actually really good and sliding on the sunnies. The Cancer Council says many companies are downloading their SunSmart messaging to be displayed next to other safety signage on job sites. We're calling on all Australian tradies to really be conscious of the sun and to do those five SunSmart 5Ss. Five so when you're having smoko and you're coming back out into the sun at midday, reapply. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. While as two Rotary groups have joined forces to raise funds, to help countries eliminate polio. They conducted a free sausage sizzle at the foreshore to raise awareness about the disease and the group's efforts in the community. Raising awareness for a disease that still affects a portion of the world's population. YL is two Rotary Clubs joining forces to hold a free community barbecue event yesterday afternoon at the foreshore. Residents of YL are able to come down, um, learn a little bit about not only the Rotary Clubs, but about our project of ending polio around the world. The group raising awareness about the disease while raising money for vaccines to be sent to Pakistan and Afghanistan. While the virus is preventable with vaccines, it is still at an endemic stage in those two countries, according to the World Health Organization. It's not that long ago that polio was rife around the world, and along with uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Rotary, we've put in, I think it's $21 billion. The barbecue, also an opportunity for both groups to showcase what Rotary does within Wyala and the Upper Spencer Gulf. Holding various fundraisers benefiting a wide sector of community groups locally within the city and across the globe. Generally affects children under the age of five, so as the world is being repopulated all the time, the need for the polio vaccine, it doesn't go away. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The Sammy D Foundation visited John Peary Secondary School this morning to announce a new partnership with Masonic Charities. The partnership will seed the delivery of more than 90 violence and alcohol and drug education programs across the region. Saying no to violence and drugs. The Sammy D Foundation, working with students in Year 7 and 9, educating them on how to react in situations that could turn violent. Students will be role-playing through different scenarios to learn the safest outcomes. They focus on giving um, students and um, young people the skills um, to prevent incidents of violence and also preventing alcohol and drug misuse. With a $300,000 donation from the Freemasons, Sammy D will be able to reach more students in regional areas. The regions we're going to this year are um, the Northern Territory, um, the current location we're in in Port Piri and the Iron Triangle. Um, we're going to the Limestone Coast and we're also going to um, the Air Peninsula. The Sammy D Foundation will now deliver 96 programs over the next three years. So that will enable us to deliver to 32 schools across four regions each year for three years. John Peary Secondary School has seen a major decrease in violent incidents since implementing Sammy D programs eight years ago. Yeah, we found it really critical. Um, we've seen a big uh, reduction in instances of violence across the school since partnering with, with Sammy D. Um, and it really complements the message, um, the strategies and programs we have. Christian Komenos, 7 Spencer Golf News. 
Acclaimed Australian singer Amy Shark will be making a stop in the Steel City as part of her nationwide tour. The eight-time ARIA Award winner will be performing at the Middleback Arts Centre on July 29th. Her tour will exclusively perform in regional cities across Australia, with Wyala the only city in the Spencer Gulf. Tickets go on sale tomorrow morning. Stay with us after the break. A Broken Hill midwife graduate in the running for a major award and a life-size statue to honour a legendary Streaky Bay jockey unveiled. Hello again. The Spencer Golf Uni Hub is happy to see new nursing students adjusting to the ways of studying externally. The Uni Hub says students feel encouraged to get a job in their own backyard when they graduate rather than moving to the city. It's the popular course to do with plenty of jobs on offer. Each year, the nursing intake grows at the Spencer Golf Uni Hub, with more students deciding to study in their hometown. Our second year cohort is bigger than any other year, so there's about 12 students enrolled in the second year and a range of students sort of between part-time and full-time across their first and second years. With most students lining up a job before they graduate, it's our most popular degree and last year all of our graduating students went on to jobs and worked in the local region, which is really exciting. Students already feeling the benefits of choosing to study in Port Pirie rather than bearing the cost of moving to Adelaide. I play a lot of local sports so um, that helps me mentally to continue with my course. Um, I also was able to get a local job which has helped me as a backup plan in case nursing doesn't work out. Although a backup plan won't be needed as the industry calls for more nurses. I'm actually starting to look at grad years for the local Port Pirie Hospital and I'm hoping, hoping to secure one um, next year, yeah. If you don't like studying alone, Unihub offers a wide study space with face-to-face -face tutoring to make sure students get through the degree. Christian Komenos, 7 Spencer Golf News. A new Broken Hill midwife has been named as a finalist in the RM Williams Rural Achiever Award. The accolade recognises young future leaders who are making a significant contribution to their community, with the winner announced at the Royal Easter Show. Helping out her new community. Midwife Meg Austin, honoured to be a finalist in the Royal Agriculture Society's Rural Achiever Award. It's a huge privilege, obviously, to be named um, and to be recognised in my local community um, as someone who is a leader within my local town. Um, and yeah, a huge privilege to be able to go to Sydney later this month. All of the finalists will be at the Easter show as part of the award, undertaking an eight-day all-inclusive program. So they won't be there just to go on rides and get show bags. So we're there for the main um, period of the show and basically get the opportunity to network um, with policy makers and um, the people that run the show and also act as stewards um, and help with the organisation behind the show. The midwife first found out about the award when she was part of the Rural Agriculture Showgirl program. I was lucky enough to uh, participate in the Rural Agriculture Society Showgirl program about five years ago um, and since then have been involved um, with the RAS um, and this opportunity came up to me and I jumped at it. She's just finished up her graduate year in Broken Hill and says she would like to stay in the Silver City as she loves the community. I absolutely hope to. Um, I'm on another 12-month contract at the moment and then we'll see what goes from there. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. The long-awaited reveal of the Karen McAvoy statue took place in Streaky Bay on Sunday. The three-time Melbourne Cup winner returned to his hometown, where his life-size sculpture will reside on the foreshore. He's one of Australia's most decorated jockeys. Hometown hero Karen McAvoy returning to Streaky Bay, where part of his legacy stands in bronze. Approximately 600 hours and actually sculpting the original artwork in the, in the plasticine, with, if you take into account the markets and drawings and so on. Um, but it was spread out over a long time because of all of the events in the world. The Streaky Bay community raising upwards of $90,000 for its build. Karen's father, Phil McAvoy, also playing a major part in bringing the sculpture to life. Yeah, it was a big process. We had to uh, have a couple of big fundraisers here in Streaky Bay. Uh, we had a dancing with the stars and that raised, you know, quite a bit of money and 35, 40,000. Then we had a big auction one night. Port Lincoln sculpture artist Ken Martin saying Karen was heavily involved in the statue's design. 
more, than, uh, more closely with me, I think, than any other person I've sculpted. And he had um, uh, quite uh, particular views on, on the costume and, and different aspects of the, the stance. A sculpture that signifies much more than just his achievements. The three-time Everest winning jockey wasn't originally on board with the idea, but words from his father convinced him of the statue's purpose to inspire the next generation. Hey, look, maybe you just look at it at a different angle and just say, you, you know, you're doing your statue for Shrigi Bay and from, you know, where you come from and, you know, for the school kids that could, you know, look at that and say, well, you know, later in life that what I want to do, I might be able to get there too. So he would love to think that uh, some young people, that the kids could come along and just as he was, a, a little kid running around Shrigi Bay and uh, see this uh, sculpture and hopefully uh, they'll feel that uh, there are uh, great things that can be achieved. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We'll have all the scores and highlights from weekend sport. And Alex Sykes will join us with the weather details. I'll see you shortly. Welcome back. A busy week in sport saw the conclusion of many grand finals, along with the start of some new seasons. Our reporter Henry Millick brings you all the action of this week's big sporting matchups. The region's sport now in its pointy end of its competitions, kicking things off with Paul Lincoln's Friday night tennis finals. Friday night saw Bendigo Bank defeat McDonald's in the thriller. The two teams tied on sets one, but Bendigo Bank edged their opponents out, claiming 80 games to 74. The team's best players saw Andrew Casanova and Emily Rowe hitting the ball well. In the other match, Paul Lincoln Dental defeated Yumba Aquaculture by four sets. Dylan Smith once again named in the best players, serving the ball strongly. The grand final will be played this Friday night. Moving on to the men's Monday night grand final. Sport Power Superstore got up in a dominant win over GPK Accounting, defeating them four sets to two. On the other court, Air Eye Centre took down the Fresh Fish Place, winning four sets 31 to two sets 23. In the final match, Terry White Kemmer defeated Shepherd Building on sets. Over to Port Lincoln Squash now. Kicking things off in round one saw I Hawk Building dominate Interact, winning four rubbers to none. In the other match was the battle between the electrical companies, seeing Hankins Electrical defeat PS Electrical 11 sets to eight. In Port Perry Softball, the A1 Women's Grand Final saw Cougars get the job done over the Solly Cats, scoring six runs to three. MVP Ann Russack was the standout, restricting the Cats' batting powers to four safe hits in a seven-innings game. In Wyala soccer, the Allen Walker League Cup continued over the weekend. Westlands United boosted their chances of making the final, defeating Wanderers 5-3 in a high-scoring contest. The other match was tightly contested, Steel United and Croatia eventually splitting the points in a one-all draw. That's all for Sports Wrap this week. We'll be back next week for all of the region's sporting action. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Alex Sykes. Thanks, Ruby, and good evening to you and our viewers today. Just another beautiful and calm day in our region with barely a cloud in sight today. Those conditions are expected to continue throughout the rest of the week. More detail on that in just a moment. From 3pm today, Wyla was mostly sunny and 25. Broken Hill was 28 and Cooper Pedy had the region's top temperature, a max of 33 degrees. Looking further out across the region now, Port Augusta and Port Piri were both sunny and 29 degrees. Port Lincoln was partly cloudy in 23, Adelaide was mostly sunny and 22, Woodner was partly cloudy in 28, Kadena was mostly sunny and 25, Cleve was partly cloudy and also 25, Clare was a sunny 27 degrees. Taking a look at this satellite image now, bright cloud over central parts is high cloud and not rain bearing generally clear elsewhere as a high ridges in. And marine wind warning is current for all of South Australia. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Southwest to southeasterly winds 15 to 20 knots, increasing to 20 in the afternoon. Seas will reach around one metre, and south to southwesterly swells will be below a metre. Port Lincoln is said to be partly cloudy in 21 tomorrow, possible late shower in Cleve with 20 degrees there. Woodner will reach 25.
While it will be partly cloudy and 23 degrees, Port Augusta and Kadena both set to reach a high of 24 degrees. Port Pirie will get to a max of 26, partly cloudy in Clare and 22, and Broken Hill will be sunny and 24 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now, Woodna and Kadena are both set to reach 23 on Thursday, cloudy and 20 in Port Lincoln. It will be mostly sunny in Port Pirie and Port Augusta. Cooperpedia will reach a max of 27 degrees, while in Adelaide, both 22. Broken Hill be sunny and also reach 22. Sunny conditions across most of the region on Friday. Port Piri and Cooperpedia will be a top of 27. Port Augusta, 26. Woodna and Kadena both to reach 25. While they're in Adelaide, 24. Port Link will be partly cloudy and 21 degrees. And it's looking like that sunny weather is sticking around on the weekend with its similar temperatures in the low to high 20s. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. Ruby, I'll see you in a bit with an update. It's back to you. Lovely. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Tuesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. We'll see you tomorrow with more local news. Good night.